Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. About three minutes before the opening bell here in New York to ring in not just the month of October, but also the final quarter of the calendar year. But let's zone in on uh, shares of Merck, which could be on the move on the announcement that it's seeking authorization for an antiviral COVID drug known as, I'm going to give us a shot here, Molnupiravir. Not bad. Uh, notable because it's the first in pill form, and apparently clinical trials show it cutting the risk of hospitalization or death in half. Uh, and this is pretty big, Julie, for the company that, as many will recall, actually stepped away from the vaccine development race in deference uh, to the other makers. So a big deal uh, on this drug uh, development. Um, yes, it is a big development. It seems like they're going to ask for emergency use authorization. They had this study that had been in progress and they stopped the study because it was uh, proving to be so successful. So again, they're going to ask for an EUA. Why is this so significant? Well, we still have a vaccination rate in this country that's not up to par. And therefore, um, you still have a lot of hospitals that are overloaded. We're seeing a lot of anecdotal reports now of people with other urgent conditions that are not able to get the care that they need because the hospitals are overloaded with COVID patients, many of whom, most of whom, the vast majority of whom have not been vaccinated. So if you have another option for these folks to cut down on the hospitalization and death rate, obviously that is a huge deal. And also, by the by, should help hopefully prevent people from taking things like medications meant for horses that are actually harmful for people. So, you know, there's a lot that this could do, I think. Um, and the market seems to be viewing it that way as well, um, overall for the market, as well as specifically for, for Merck here when it looks at the outcome of this, of this drug. That is, of course, assuming that the EUA ends up being approved by the FDA. Yeah, I won't be taking any of those uh, horse shots or pills anytime soon, Julie. But uh, look, I'll quickly add, too, uh, if this is approved, you know, think about the global impact. You know, this could be very useful in, in emerging markets that, that need this type of care. And then ultimately, over time, you know, just help the overall global growth picture. Yeah, absolutely. And when you think about that in combination with the availability of the one shot J&J &J in other countries, I mean, this could definitely be a useful tool. It's a, a big development, a big step from uh, the depths of the pandemic. When we recall, we had really no tools to deal with any of this. So again, uh, you know, this type of antiviral COVID drug, again, different goals here than with the vaccine itself, uh, but still tangentially related when you just consider it's, again, part of this broader toolkit that uh, not just the United States, but the world now has when it comes to addressing all of this. But it looks like we are getting the opening bell on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, look at it right there. That appears to be I on Q. It's the first publicly traded CurePlay Quantum Computing Company. That's uh, Peter Chapman, president and CEO. That's ringing the opening bell, bringing us in on this first day of trading on October. And a reminder that our coverage right here on Yahoo Finance around the bell is brought to you by PIMCO. Uh, but let's continue our discussion here with some other stocks as the markets uh, open up here. Uh, again, I want to focus on Zoom Communications this morning. It apparently had a nearly $15 billion M&A transaction collapse yesterday. Uh, their target was supposedly 5.9. It's a, a company that's in cloud-based contact center software. My interpretation, that's just industry jargon for uh, the tech that's behind customer support. But, you know, what's weird about this, guys, is that seems like everyone was against this. The Department of Justice apparently was looking into it, given uh, Zoom's ties to China. There's also the institutional shareholder services that actually recommended uh, shareholders vote against this merger. So it's not exactly clear who actually wanted this. But regardless, that deal has fallen apart. You can see shares of Zoom are on the rise. But Julie, uh, Brian, I mean, you know, just really interesting here. I guess we'll go to you, Julie, here. But it, it's just a big transaction for a company that's gotten a lot of attention uh, through the pandemic. Yeah, a big transaction. What's interesting to me is not only are shares of Zoom higher, but shares of Five9 are higher too, which tells you that, you know, maybe people didn't think that this deal was such a great idea in the first place. Typically, when you have a buyout target that's no longer being bought, the shares go down, but that's not happening. And in looking at some of the analyst commentary this morning, they're basically saying, my favorite one might be Morgan Stanley uh, saying in a note, their note is titled, stood up at the altar, but bachelor life isn't half bad. They're saying that with regards to Zoom in particular, but it seems like analysts in general are happy enough to let both of these companies just remain standalones and work on their businesses. Um, another note from Barclay says, we don't think a lack of a deal hurts Five Nines positioning with enterprise customers. So it's it's a little bit rare here to see this kind of a reaction, Saz. 
Yeah, and I think the Guggenheim, you know, I'm just checking out a note now from them, really highlights why this deal went bust. One, uh, it was an all stock deal. You had Zoom stock down about 27% since the deal was announced. Not good for five nine shareholders. And Guggenheim noting uh, they talked with a good number of five nine shareholders, and, and the feedback on the deal was mixed. Uh, so I'm not, I can't say I'm shocked, but I will say this. Clearly, you have a Zoom with tons and tons of cash on their balance sheet, slowing revenue growth, uh, potentially peak operating margins. This company is going to need an acquisition, uh, and hopefully it learned its lesson from what it tried to do here with 5.9, offer some cash in a deal. You can't all just be stock, especially when your stock's under pressure. Well, let's move on to another stock. Let's look at uh, meme stock AMC. Uh, there was some news from the company that it's exercising an option to repurchase $35 million in some of its uh, first lien secured notes. These are due in about five years. It's going to reduce some of the company's annual interest costs. You can see the shares of the stock going up by 5%. Although, what's to say why AMC is ever moving in any which direction on any given day? But I mean, guys, the five-day price movement has just been remarkable on this stock. It was down as low as, I think, 33, 34 bucks yesterday. It started off the week, though, around this price, around 40 bucks. Look at that dip and then right back up. But of course, uh, just a dramatic change from where we had seen it, uh, you know, earlier in the year. So, Sazi, I mean, <laughs> what's the story? Are people, are these meme stock traders on Reddit actually paying attention to these first lean secured notes? Come on. No, I don't think they really care. I, I think uh, it'd be very interesting to watch the close today on AMC in large part. Because here's a company that has made, uh, you know, has told their traders or their retail investors that they're going to start accepting crypto. Uh, and I'm really curious to see, given the spike we have seen this morning in crypto, is AMC now lumped in as one of those crypto stocks? Uh, and if it is, and if these retail investors think it is now a crypto play, I mean, you could see a large move into the close. Uh, hmm. I'm. I'm trying to put the. Uh, I would. I'm be reading the tape. How, how, reading how the does tape that work? Here, so you, so you think works. that because people are going to be paying for movie tickets and Litecoin, that that's... Well, well, no, just because people are allowed, they're allowing people to pay in crypto, it doesn't mean they're gonna, and it doesn't mean that AMC is going to have any kind of size of crypto on its balance sheet. I mean, come on, the people perception. who are trading this it's thing... It's about perception. Mm, I think you're giving the people who trade this thing a little too little credit in this particular I love, case. I love my retail investor fans. I love the tweets I get from them on AMC. Uh, very fascinating. Yeah, I'm sure that you do. <laughs> um, let's talk about one other name that has been popular with retail investors, by the way, in a different kind of way. I'm talking about ARK Invest um, and uh, the benchmark or uh, their, their main product, I should say, the ARK Innovation ETF. ARK K, of course, is that. And I'm checking on it because there's a story that's catching my eye this morning that uh, that ETF actually had its biggest ever quarter of outflows, almost $2 billion out of that um, as of the end of September for the quarter. And, you know, it's, it's interesting that this is happening. It didn't happen all through um, the quarter, it wasn't consistent every week that it was seeing outflows. And it's also interesting because RK provides um, daily data on this. So they're quite transparent when it comes to this. Um, but we know what's happened with the with the price. So I guess flows are just following price, but there's still plenty of believers out there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's notable that uh, this is coinciding with just the broad market story of growth kind of getting hit on the chin, as Amanda was just over at PNC was just talking about. But I think we also have to acknowledge that the specific space that ARC is trying to address is getting a little bit more crowded as well. Uh, we had uh, Goldman Sachs on this show talking about their future tech leaders equity ETF. And it's not exactly targeting the same types of baskets of stock that uh, ARC Innovation or their other products are seeking to put together. But in this broad kind of ETF boom of a lot of these types of funds being put together that have certain thematic investing elements to it, it's no longer as novel for someone to kind of offer a product like this because there are so many others uh, that are climbing into this space as well that have a very similar characteristics with a slight little twist that could really suck a lot of outflows out from the uh, the traditional the traditional innovation ETFs, which I would say ARC might certainly be one of those as one of those first movers, but certainly uh, worth watching in the space as possible other competitors try to get into the space as well. Yeah, speaking of tech guys here, I just got an alert on my phone that my Roomba vacuum uh, just got uh, stuck. So we got to get done with this segment. That is innovation in its finest form, maybe ugliest form. Uh, it's stuck up against the wall somewhere. So let's get to break. <laughs> 